class, how are we doing today? On the board, I have another case of velocity banking and infinite banking combined together using capital. Some of my clients have um, a large sum of money that they might want to use to ignite or, or start with velocity banking to rapidly pay off debt. And in many cases, we don't have the debt tool just yet. So there are some clients that I have that do not have a debt tool, don't have the line of credit, don't have a HELOC, but you might have a large sum of money such as you know, a big savings account or maybe you're able to borrow from your qualified retirement account. Strategically, we can take out a loan as long as it's calculated simple interest and then the debt, the loan that we borrow out of that 401k, as long as we use it properly to either increase cash flow to a certain amount so that whatever the payment is back to the 401k would still give us a net positive cash flow gain. So on the situation on the board here, we are using a large sum of money that we got from a sale right from a property and this this gentleman here he's a real estate investor he does uh, seller financing that's his strategy as a real estate investor and he's also looking to implement velocity banking and infinite banking to expedite his wealth process of how he creates wealth and also leverage the money that he already uses to both invest in real estate and to pay his expenses, pay bills like everyone normally does. All we're doing is adding a couple of tools to make the process of how you pay for things that much better for your own economy as you build up your wealth, okay? So let's look at some numbers here. We've got income of $6,800, expenses 53, total debt 242, and starting cash flow roughly 1500 bucks per month. Our debt tool that we're gonna establish is a policy. So without even having to run credit, we can establish a policy as our debt tool to rapidly pay off debt. What I went ahead and did for this gentleman is design a policy which would allow me to put in this amount of money and have a premium that is low enough to supply the funding amount that I want to be able to put in, okay? So some easy math, really uh, general, really age is not a huge factor when we're designing the, uh, for the infinite banking concept. It's, um, you know, it's more so on the person's funding capability and the purpose of which we're using the policy for your age, your health, your rating does play a, an end factor in terms of actually getting approved for the insurance. But once you are approved, right, it doesn't necessarily affect our costs on a grand, like a big dramatic scale to the point where it doesn't make sense, okay? The only time it wouldn't make sense to acquire this type of insurance policy is if the person themselves is not in good health, they got a poor rating, maybe you're a smoker, you drink a lot, you just, you know, you didn't take care of your health. And the, the stats came back that maybe you got approved, but at a poor, poor rating, and the insurance company is requiring a much higher premium on top of what we're trying to do here, then it wouldn't make sense. And so, the question then arises, well, Denzel, you know, I'm 60, I'm 65, I'm 70, you know, I have a lot of viewers that are in their late 50s and 60s. I seem to be attracting that, that crowd quite a bit. So what I say is, number one, if you have a spouse, whether you're the man or the woman, you have a spouse that is healthier than you or younger than you or both, we can potentially look at your spouse rather than getting an insurance policy on you, the person that is unhealthy, we can put it on spouse. And if the both of you are out of shape, 
bad health, just, you know, not good. Sec the third suggestion would be obtaining an insurance policy on the children, okay? If they're over 21, it's easier. If they're a minor, it's a little bit more difficult, a little more restrictions involved with that. That's for another separate video, but just giving you an idea because I get a lot of people asking me, oh, can this work for me if I'm 65, if I'm 70, if I'm 80, if I'm 82? At that point, I'm like, dude, where you been for the last 60 years? What's going on? You know, and that at that point, we have to start thinking, what is the most use I can get out of my time and money for these last years that I'm here on earth? How can I maximize my time and money for the benefit of my heir, not you. you. You know, if you're at that age, you're 70, 75, 80, you're 80 years old, and you still don't have your finances in order, it is no longer about you. That's it. You have to, you gotta sacrifice what you want and just apply everything to your heirs and kids. Live through them through your legacy. That would be my advice. Live through them through your legacy because you didn't take the time you wasted those years not getting your finances in order and that might be a hard pill to swallow but guess what being that being that old and not taking action while you were younger while you could have educated yourself and now you're blaming the world or you're blaming whatever you want to blame rather than yourself then you want to look at it from how can i maximize my time and money to live through my heirs so that my legacy would continue to live on. And that's noble. Here's what we did. Lump sum of cash, designed a policy where we're actually putting in $8,000. So I'm telling the insurance company, I'm gonna fund it $8,000 a year. Of that 8,000, okay, 7K goes towards premium. So $7,000 goes towards premium of the 8,000, right? This 7,000 provides me a MEC, modified endowment contract, an IRS limit, the max amount of money I can put into this life insurance policy, $70,000, okay? We're putting in 60, we've got about 10K of space. We're telling the insurance company we're putting in 8,000, of that 8,000, seven goes towards premium, the other 1K will get dumped in PUAs, which stands for cash value, right? Now, of this total 60, the other $52,000, right? The other 52K from this equation is also going in PUA, cash. When it's all said and done with the insurance companies, they'll allow you to put in up to 10 times what your premium cost is, not what you're funding, but what your premium cost is. They'll allow you put, they'll allow you put in up to 10 times that amount, okay? Directly into the cash value, which you can borrow up to 90 or 95% of what's available in cash value. Here's the estimated amount of cash value that he'll have total, right? Here is what will be available, right about, about available for him to borrow, to take a policy loan out, okay? So here's how we give this 60K multiple uses, right? That's what Velocity Banking is always trying to do, is maximize the dollar, use it more than once, okay? If you can use money, the same money, more than once, two, three, four, five times over, you're doing velocity banking, okay? And the policy is gonna be that tool which allows this gentleman to do velocity banking outside of having a line of credit or even a credit card, okay? So, we take out a policy loan, all right? And here is the strategy kind of laid it out for you. Got our income over here. We got the lump sum of cash, lump, lump sum of cash right here. Credit card, line of credit is the desired tools that we still want to acquire without a doubt. 
Now he does have a bunch of credit cards, okay, this gentleman right here, but he doesn't have the line of credit. We'll get there, okay? He's a business owner, real estate investor, trust me, he'll get there. He'll get big credit lines. This money goes into the policy, which we then borrow out of back into our income to pay debts, pay some bills. I laid out for you right here the debts that we're going to wipe out with that same money that's sitting in the policy. So all of this 60K over time will get recouped, okay, in the form of dividends, interest earnings inside of the policy, which is pretty cool. In addition to earning that money, this man also receives a $2.7 million death benefit that he will not pay for his whole life, even though this is a whole life policy. He's not going to pay into it his whole life. Matter of fact, we are going to strategically fund it for a certain period of time, max fund it all the way up to the mech, right, every single year, and then have this large line of credit, this debt tool that we can use to do what he loves to do. Pretty cool, right? So he's going to be making money through here, using that same money to then invest in real estate and make, I mean, 20, 40, and 50% returns in real estate, right? Meanwhile, this policy is guaranteeing him anywhere from, you know, 4 to 6%. Every single year, year after year, no matter what, he never loses the value of his dollars, which is awesome. Because no matter what, something happens to him, boom. Legacy, covered, kingdom, established, family, set up. While he's living, boom. Can always use the money, right? Even when he borrows the money out, that money will still be there as if he never touched it. The idea is we want to pay ourselves back just like we would a line of credit so that we can use it over again. Right? So rather than taking the money out, paying off all the debts, right? So when we pay off all these debts right here from the money that we pulled out, we get a cash flow gain of $1300 plus. Rather than stuffing that gain and this and this over here in the checking account, letting it sit there and do nothing, and do nothing, you might as well throw it back into the policy, take it out again, and then pay your bills. What stays in is the cash flow there, the cash flow here. I never lose my money in the process of paying off all the debts. Not bad, right? So we pay off one, two, three, four, five, six debts with the same money that I funded the policy with, right? I get this cash flow gain, and now I do velocity banking to pay myself back what I took out, my own cash. And then when I recoup the money, when I pay myself back, what do you think I'm gonna do again? I'm gonna take the money out and then go invest in more real estate or continue to pay off more debt, whatever he chooses. Usually my answer is always going to most likely in many cases that I work with, it's usually leaning towards paying off debt because it mathematically I'm increasing uh, a lot of cash flow without investing in anything and waiting on a return. So it's usually always best to pay off debt. Now, on the other hand, if you are someone that has a business, you have a goal, right? You know what you're doing. You have prior knowledge before talking to me and you can get me this on top of my principal money. That's where Denzel says, hey, hey, I like it. You like it. I like it. You like it. You like it. I like it. Let's do that. Let's invest and let's make some cash, right? Because I'm willing to let this sit 
if I'm going to make 50% and only pay, I don't know, four or five over here. I'm willing to make that exchange. What I'm not willing to do is make a bet with my clients. You know, if you can't provide me with hard data that you've been doing this for X amount of years, you've got experience, da da da, you're a professional, right? If I don't feel that vibe, if I feel like I'm the smartest one in the room, right? Because I never like to be like that. I always like to be like open, ready to receive more knowledge from people, right? They usually say, if you're the smartest one in the room, you're in the wrong room, right? So when it's just you and I, and one of us is gonna have more knowledge in something, right? My expertise lies here. Velocity banking, infinite banking, paying off debt. That Denzel's the debt guy, that's it. Pays off debts, we create financial freedom by increasing and maximizing cash flow, maximizing our dollars. If you come to the table with knowledge over here, oh man, can we combine and do something really unique, very interesting, and really 10x the strategy of Velocity Banking. Because once you start talking how to make money with Velocity Banking, like let me tell you, all the videos I've done so far, none of them go over how to make money with Velocity Bank. I'm not even at that stage yet, honestly. And I wanna keep myself until I can do it for myself, get the results, and then I teach it to you guys. In addition, to everything that's been going on here, we have a credit card that we're gonna do velocity banking with outside of the policy to maximize his dollars, okay? One of the things that he's doing is combining credit cards. He's got two Chase accounts, right? So notice how we paid off one Chase account, but then he's gonna take that limit and combine it with the other debt that he has on his credit card and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this income here, when it, when it goes here, when he makes the money, it lands in the checking account. Before he, before he puts all the money in the policy, which he'll do regardless, he's gonna, I believe that's what he wants to do, is he wants to put all the income in the policy because he's gonna be rapidly borrowing, paying it back, borrowing, paying it back. That's gonna be the plan here. As he's doing that, he can also buy himself 30 to 60 days by running as many expenses as he possibly can on the Chase card, right? Right on the Chase card. So he runs all the bills through there, doesn't pay any interest until the actual due date. Meanwhile, he can probably get in two of these incomes right a 30-day period could probably get in that plus when he does more business okay because i'm sure that he'll sell another property or he'll do something to get another what lump sum of cash and when that occurs again the rule is all, all the money goes in there always bump and then we take it out comes here before we use our cash to pay the bills, we pay the credit card, pay the credit card off what we used the prior month, and then use that same money again to pay the future bills. And that's how you, look, now we're using money two and three and four and five times over, same money over and over again. And then this, just supplies and fuels the system fuels it fuels it what keeps it alive is this the cash flow all right so at the end of the day it's all about the cash flow okay that's something i've been learning more and more about is no, no matter how pretty I, I you know i try to make your scenario if you ain't got this there's only so it's only so far we can go with the results right so please guys for people that are you know, you're, you're making money, whether you're making good money or little money, it's all about the cash flow. If you can live a 50% lifestyle and not just pay for, no, don't waste money, right? And just cut back, go a little radical here for a couple months, get your cash flow right, hire me to work with you, and we get this thing going, all right? So I hope you enjoyed this. My name is Denzel. God bless you and have a wonderful day.